Welcome to Run With It, the podcast that brings you business ideas from established entrepreneurs. Each episode, you'll hear a new business idea and the exact steps our guests would take to get started. Follow through and you can earn a free mentoring session with today's guest and potentially a business partnership. Here are your hosts, Chris Justin and Ethan Janney. I'm Chris Justin. And I'm Ethan Janney. And on today's show, we have Alexi Vedichaga. Alexi is the co-founder and leads the development efforts of Award Wallet, which he launched in 2004. Award Wallet provides a free service that helps you manage your reward balances and travel itineraries. Alexi, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This episode is going to be a little bit different, so uh, we'll figure it out together, but glad to hear that you're game for it. We normally interview successful entrepreneurs and ask them about new business ideas that they'd like to share with our listeners. You didn't have one uh, queued up ready for listeners. So we're going to use this opportunity to talk with you about Award Wallet and some of the challenges that you're facing and opportunities that you're facing within Award Wallet itself. Some of the changes that have occurred this year, it's a very tumultuous time. Uh, I think that'd be an incredibly valuable perspective to have. We know you do have some business ideas you're keeping close to your chest. So we may try to do some sleuth work and figure out some hints. <laughs> I doubt you'll be successful. <laughs> oh man, that's a challenge. So let's uh, let's start off general here. Tell us about a typical day for you. Oh, uh, my typical day is emails, emails, and more emails. I I wake up and I open my uh, inbox and. There you go. It starts. I, I do calls, obviously, with the dev guys in the morning because they are outsourced. So uh, mornings work best. But throughout the day, I'm reading and answering emails. It's kind of old medium for communication, but literally that's what occupies my day. So in terms of the, the challenges that you're facing or things you kind of wish were taken off your plate, is there anything that stands out? Uh, my biggest challenge is the fact that three major U.S. airlines decided that they don't want their users track miles through a word wallet. Solving that challenge is impossible for me. At least I wasn't able to um, solve it in the last maybe six or seven years, but I keep working on it. It is impossible to block a word wallet technically, but what they did is they sent cease and desist letters. And that's a whole different ballgame. While a lot of providers that we support are open and help us, Delta United and Southwest said that we don't want users tracking miles. It's interesting. Southwest, I notice, also is an airline that it's, it's, it's hard to do the kind of online filter for Southwest. You kind of just have to go to Southwest to get their prices. You, you, they, they're not a part of a lot of these aggregators, right? Absolutely, yeah. That, I'm not sure, though, that's the reason but they were actually the first ones to send the cease and desist letter. Can you talk about your perceived advantages and disadvantages for any airline being tracked with the word wallet? From airlines perspective, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like why wouldn't they want you and why would other ones not care or not send you cease and desist letters? Or, yeah. The reason why airlines would want the users to track their miles is because as soon as you get a grip on through sort of your loyalty profile, your miles, elite status, expirations, all of those things, you become more involved with the program. Essentially, that's what loyalty programs are designed to do. They're designed to get people engaged. And if you can't track this stuff, you're not going to be engaged. So from that perspective, we're definitely helpful. We're bringing engaged users to the airlines and we you know, we're not an airline. We don't compete with them. There's, there's no, you know, if users are engaged, they're going to use your product more. So that's, that's why they, they would uh, want people to track miles. The reason why they would not. And I think that is probably the main reason why we're getting blocked. And the airlines probably would never admit it is because people will just check their balance through a word wallet and not visit their website and they want those eyeballs on their website they got it they never admit that they would tell you oh it's because of security but we know it cannot be because of security because there are many ways to make it very secure not to mention that banks give us this access we are pulling information securely 
on points and uh, miles for, let's say, Bank of America and Capital One right now through their APIs. Do you have any data on how likely one of your users is to book on an airline if they're able to easily track their miles using a Ward wallet? Yeah, I um, I met with with the president of uh, Delta Sky Miles to prepare for that meeting uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. I ran the numbers exactly what you're saying. We looked at I think maybe ten different airlines, and um, so if you registered your account a year ago with us, we can look at your, at your account activity for one year prior to you joining a Word Wallet. And then we know your activity for a year after you joined the Word Wallet. And we can see how many flights were you taking before you joined and after. How engaged were you with the program? And the lowest increase we saw was maybe like 5 or 4%. But in some cases, it was like 30% increase in activity. So if you start playing the game, meaning you start getting engaged and you start falling for the loyalty uh, program that they created for you, you'll be more, you know, they'll they'll get a more engaged user. Uh, and that usually happens once people are able to track it. Tracking is important. Otherwise, you know, it's all easy once you, if you have one program, if you just have a Hilton account and, or, or, or a Delta account, then that's it. But the reality is, you know, you have anywhere from like retail stores, Best Buy, Starbucks stores, you have all sorts of loyalty everywhere you know, airlines, hotels, rental cars, cruises, and so forth and so on. If you can't track it, it gets really challenging. Miles start expiring, you lose interest. Um, you know, our biggest competitor and people who stayed engaged and who have been doing this for many, many years are all have been using Excel. Our biggest competitor is Excel or spreadsheets. That's how people do this. We're basically spreadsheet on steroids. We, you know, we automate all of this. Wouldn't want to get in the boxing ring with a spreadsheet on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> How did the Delta representative respond to that data? That seems very compelling. If you say that at a minimum, you're going to get a 5% lift in engagement. If I remember correctly, and by the way, this was, I want to say maybe five years ago or six years ago. He said, you know, I have a million people outside my door waiting to get a meeting with me. What is so special about a word wallet? Like, why, why are we even talking about this? We are and definitely were a very small fish, you know, compared to Delta. You know, you have a startup that comes to an airline and I'm happy to just have that meeting with them, but it's just, it wasn't a priority. They said, okay, you know, go away. Basically, I think it's interesting that he said that, you know, why should I care? You guys are a small fish compared to us, but they still took the time to send a cease and desist letter to you. That seems like. Yeah, actually, at least two cease and desist letters. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not so small that they didn't, <laughs> that they didn't care about what you're doing. Yeah. You hit the sort of almost like brick wall with just them not getting it. Um, because they say, well, we have an app. We have a good app. There is our CIO sitting in the same meeting or CDO, whatever. And we built an awesome app. We have everything people need in that app. We have the miles, the number of miles. And, you know, to that, my response is great. You have an app. We don't replace your app. As soon as your app starts tracking all the other miles, then we compete. But your app, absolutely, you need the app for boarding passes and whatever else, any communication you want to have with the user, it's legit. We don't want to compete with your app. I'm curious whether you've had a similar meeting with a company who does get it. And I'd love to oh, yeah. hear the, the differences in, uh, in what they say, what they call out. Yeah, I mean, the four or five years ago, I would say, um, Capital One reached out. They said, we love what you're doing. You, we know you're essentially parsing our website. We want to build an API and switch to that uh, OAuth-based access to pull the data. I said, great, we would love that. There's no reason why would we wouldn't like it. Um, so how do you want to proceed? 
uh, the guy who was in charge, the in charge of essentially running that initiative, traveled, came to what you're seeing is essentially my in my basement. We sat here together, talked about it, spec'd it out. He's a technical guy. Went out uh, for dinner, and then he went back to the drawing board, and they created an API for us. Um, and even at the time, they were going to South by Southwest to uh, to make to announce that. And I think they had some other uh, things that they built that they wanted to announce. And they invited me to come with them as a showcase that we're using their API. Uh, so yeah, that's that's an example of of not just saying kudos, we like what you're doing, but also actually creating a new way and more secure way of exchanging that data. Then I have a lot of examples where an airline or a hotel would reach out and would say, we see millions of account logins from you guys. And we don't hide it. We In the user agent string, I don't know if you know what that is, but when you access a web server, there is a user agent string that defines who you are. For example, it could define that this is a Safari browser or a Chrome browser. We identify ourselves as a word wallet. By the time they contact us, they usually already kind of did some research. So they looked at our website and they say, well, we want to have a better way to distinguish you guys from potential hackers, for example, that are trying to attack our, our, our website. Can you give us all of your IP, IP addresses? And on top of it, they would usually disable all the bot prevention things which we have to deal with on daily basis like captchas where you have to find traffic lights on 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 the squares and on the pictures so they would not not just acknowledge the fact that they're okay with us but they also remove those roadblocks that they usually put for other companies i think this is great info i mean our, our audience or our direction is primarily towards people who are starting projects and i think it's really good to see for people to see kind of what are the actual tactical day-to-day things that someone who's working on a software company actually has to deal with in terms of meeting with people, building relationships, you know, it's little hacks that you need to do that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Like it's not a formal contract. It's kind of like you just reach out and you say, Hey, you're the data guys at this company. Here's something we can work out. I listen to the Indie Hackers podcast a lot, and that's geared towards software developers. And there's this this idea that software developers, they just think they're going to build a software, you know, without considering what it's going to, what the audience or the user is going to be like, and then they're going to put it out there and it's going to work, you know? And I think that this is great information to say, okay, you know, there's the software, but then you got to talk to, you know, the president of a company. You're going to have to talk to the development team. You have to have to talk to the API team in a different com- a company to make this all work together. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 complicated. And when I was starting it, I had no idea, you know, that I would be doing these things X number of years later. When we decided that we that we wanted to launch a word wallet, we looked at all of the loyalty programs in just in the world, or at least in the U.S. mainly, and we've identified I think 50 or 70 programs that that we need to support in order to make a, a useful product. And uh, today we support about 700, and there's probably like 1,500 in the backlog right now. Wow. I wanted to ask you, this has come up on the show before. Many experienced entrepreneurs have highlighted this idea that when you have a certain portion of your potential clientele that's not that really into the idea, and then you have another portion that is, even if you're really excited about the portion that's not excited about your idea, you just kind of actually ignore them. So just curious, going back to that question of the three major airlines, do you ever kind of think, you know what? I don't, it's not even worth thinking about them. Like, let me just focus on our most excited uh, clients. And, and that's not even where I need to go. Or is it kind of like, oh, no, we really need them. We, we really need them. Yeah, we really need them. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of like, a, I mean, the only, the only time when we really don't need them is when we're talking about non-US based users. Like if we're, 
you know, we're pretty popular in Brazil, for example. That's why our website is translated into Portuguese. It's not really a, a deal breaker if those three airlines are not part of the system for for Brazilian users. I wanted to come at this from a different angle in terms of customer acquisition for you and, and growing your revenue from year to year. What would you say is the biggest barrier to that? The, you know, there are, there are, first of all, there are three ways how we make money. So it's not just one thing. There is a Word Wallet Plus. So we have a, it's a freemium, uh, freemium product where you can use a Word Wallet, pretty much get it, you know, all, almost all the features, the core features of the product are available for free. For, so we are only charging for like the most, I would say, advanced set of features right now because we do want more users. We have to balance this thing and even just coming up with the price for the product. Initially, when, when I launched the Word Wallet Plus as a as a paid product, I said, you can pay whatever you want, but it has to be more than one dollar or you could be equal to equal to or, or, or more than one dollar. And obviously, most people paid one dollar. And the reason for that is like we need to make money because websites change. I get on a call every day. Today is Thursday. I had a call at noon with my dev team. I'm just looking at my log. There were like 15 programs that were outlined that were that that changed. So 15 websites changed in some shape or form that needed to be fixed today. So I got to support that. That happens every day. I got to have money for it. You know, there's 96% of people are not paying us anything. They're all using the bandwidth. They're all using the, you know, the server resources or Amazon AWS uh, bill is pretty high. And so you have to balance it. I was never really good at marketing. Never figured it out. As, as a matter of fact, in college, I took one marketing class and I said, no, I'm never doing this. So marketing is not my strong thing. You know, I've tried a bunch of things, but none of them worked. I tried hiring people and none of them really worked. Like it's just, it's too expensive to acquire users. So the way we grow is by word of mouth, you know, just people find us. I don't, I don't actually know how at this point. It just happens. When you talked about biz dev before being not the biggest headache on your mind, but kind of a big thing, what does biz dev account for? Is it the marketing side of a thing? Is it the sort of client outreach and partnerships that you want to work with people? Or what would that biz dev person do? Yeah, so I, I, I had a partner... Well, I had different partners in the last 15 years of running the business. And I know what an experienced person can bring. They're hard to find, but if you have, if you find somebody with a track record of growing businesses, it's like night and day. I had a guy who worked with me, uh, Jeff Bianco. He worked with, with a, for, he was the president of, of a World Wallet for at least two years, maybe three years. And uh, he built and sold uh, software companies. Um, I think at least three companies that he built and sold before um, before he joined the Word Wallet. I learned a ton just by just being with him, like side by side. We would go on site together. Um, some of the things it felt like, why are we doing this? Like, why are we wasting so much time on a proposal that we could have just just done it like in an hour, but no, like you want to involve all these people and really like make it great. But I just did. I'm like, okay, if you tell me, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's get the people working overnight and let's do it this way. And it worked. So let's say I just, let's say I came to you and I said, you need business development. You know, this is what I do. You know, I'm going to help increase your user base. You don't like marketing. I'm going to help you with the marketing. I'm going to help increase your revenues and grow your business. It's a, and I have a consulting firm. I've got a team, maybe it's me and I've got three or four other people. We're going to, you know, double your user base or double your revenue or just, you know, hit some target that we set together. Okay. What okay. Kind of like what, kind of what your former president did, you know, just, yeah. just say, hey, but Jeff Bianco, right? Just come in and... Yeah. You won't, you won't understand it, but we're going to take care of it. <laughs> well, number one, I don't really believe in outsourcing. So if we do this, then come on board and be full-time. And obviously, I, it's a different 
relationship. It's a different arrangement, would cost differently, but I pretty much haven't seen successful um, major projects that were outsourced. Small things can be outsourced, but this is not a small thing. This is a big thing. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on a consulting basis. Probably maybe I'm wrong. Um, you know, I haven't tried it. I've tried other things. Uh, I've tried other consulting things or, or outsourcing things, but especially with development um, or even design, it shouldn't just be like, we want to design this, this app, create us the, the images and, and we're done. Like it doesn't work this way. You need continuous work. You have to be involved. And maybe the first couple of tries, it doesn't work. You need multiple iterations before you get to that point where it actually is successful. Jeff was really good at B2B biz dev. He was not good and he never claimed to be good at B2C biz dev. So he never claimed that he could grow our user base from, I don't know, 100,000 to 200,000 or from half a million to a million and i still haven't i don't know how to grow user base um if i find a person who, with a track record of growing a user base in a similar setting i understand there are ways to grow users through like b2b to c um and maybe that's that's the way to go um uh, but can you define what also, b2b there, to c is just because i'm not yeah, familiar so, with that so, yeah, well let's Let's just imagine that instead of tracking loyalty programs, we actually create loyalty programs. Like there is a restaurant and we want to provide them with a loyalty program. And as part of the deal, we tell them uh, they have to track their miles through our app. So I sell to this restaurant once. I do our B2B biz dev and they bring all of their customers into my app. Got it. So they actually do the work of, of acquiring users. I'm not actually doing it. Like I never go and I never tell anybody to, to join this, this app. Um, but I find businesses that do it for me, essentially. So somebody has that skill set, And if I find a person like this, I would love to work with them. But they need to have a track record. And most likely, if they have a track record like that, they're probably not going to work with me. <laughs> I see on your site one of the cool features that is... Uh there's this promo section where you can see flights that are leaving your area, yeah. uh, the dates, the duration, airline, and the price, and how much below average that price is. Uh, so that's pretty cool to be able to have that. That's something that I personally would be interested in. I thought so too. We built it. like This is a really cool thing. We partnered with Skyscanner to, to do this, um, you know, and just, I thought it'd be amazing to just sort the, sort the flights in the order of how far below average they are. But it's really not a popular feature on a word model. I'm surprised you saw it. That like nobody's using <laughs> it. Like it's just, it's just. That's funny. I would love as a user to be able to say, "Hey, this this weekend, I want to go to New Orleans. I already know exactly which weekend it is." Uh, here are all my award programs that I'm part of and chase points and all that stuff. Tell me which airline I should use and when, and when I should book it. Um, and if you can do that, you'll save me an hour and a half of stress and, uh, and the feeling that I could have got a better deal. I realize that's a hard problem to solve, uh, but I would pay for that. Yeah, actually, we actually started solving this problem. Uh, nothing yet released, but that is a problem that we want to solve. But there's two things there. One is I can tell you, I can probably tell you with the data that we have today, how you should do it. And I can like I can tell you the whole thing. It'd probably be too boring, but there are a lot of steps that we need to take before I can actually even start creating an interface that would tell you how to do this. But the main thing is I can tell you how to do it, but I cannot guarantee reward availability because to do that, I need to parse the websites for reward availability. And if we are already getting backlash from Delta United and Southwest for just letting people track miles and points, if we start parting their, parsing their website for availability of rewards, we're definitely going to get sued. Well, not definitely, but we're going to be a lot closer to getting sued by them. 
and they don't publish this information. It's not it's not available through the standard like Amadeus or the different APIs that that can provide you pricing information for flights. The reward data is not available through GDSs. But what we do have is we have a lot of data, and I can tell you essentially how other people did this. And spending your miles on a domestic flight is probably not the best use of your miles. But I think where this would be very useful is if you say, I live here, I want to go to Budapest in business. I wonder what percentage of your users are actually looking for those like crazy deal international flights and what percentage of them are looking for a good deal. I, I follow every now and then I look on the points guys website to see what my award points should be worth. And I'm never close to getting the full valuation for that. For me to know if a redemption from New York to Budapest was a good deal, I need to understand the value of points very well. And TPG and One Mile at a Time and the other bloggers, they're very knowledgeable. They know a lot more than I do about all of this, but, it, but their numbers are not scientific. But the, A, these things change, points get devalued, and B, there's no like trends behind it because of their personal experience. And so what we're doing, and we haven't released it, and I don't know when we will be able to, but we take every flight that you book with points. We do a query and we find the alternative flights, which is difficult to define a truly alternative flight because there is economy and there is premium economy, there's economy and there is this basic economy. And making sure you can truly compare things, it's not easy. And that's that's where we kind of got stuck so far, but we'll I think we'll solve this problem. You know, subtract from that price, from the actual price of a ticket, the amount you paid in taxes and fees for that flight. And then obviously divide one number by the other and come up with the the redemption value of those points. What is the alternative? And like at what rate are you redeeming your your miles? And we would do this for every flight, for every hotel booking. What are these points actually worth based on actual data? And I think that's the advantage that we have over all of the other bloggers in the space that do these valuations is that we can actually give you the actual numbers. Let's say we just take the last 300 flights that people took on award wallet, like the award wallet users. And and then and then we can look at it historically. Okay, the, these were the prices up until a devaluation happened because these things happen all the time. And we can show you how that actually changes. Now people start booking at a new rate. And now knowing, having this inf- information available, when you say, I want to go from New York to Budapest, I'm not just looking for people who book flights, reward flights from New York to Budapest. I can find the p- people that made those bookings with the highest value of points. And I can tell you that is the way to go. But I still cannot guarantee that it's available. But uh, overall strategy, I can see it like it's there. So I'm still thinking back to the kind of business opportunities here. And I, it, it seems like there's a couple of things that are outstanding for you. And that is the business development, which you'd, you'd love to have a person on your team. So if anybody out there is listening and they think they're great at business development. Of course, we can connect you with Alexi. You can make your pitch. And in addition, it sounds like there's a there's a piece of of managing these relationships too with these big name airlines or the at least three large airlines. How can you properly manage that so you can win and they can win and everybody feels like you have a good business relationship? I can see that uh, if there was a resource that you had, whether it's the person on your team or or someone else, maybe they know the landscape of dealing with corporations a little bit better. It sounds like it could be of high value. I chose to build this business from scratch with no outside funding. Like we never raised cash. We, we've just been bootstrapping from the beginning, you know, and I don't have the skill set required to do biz dev. Like I'm not a business person. I've never I really done business when I started this. You know, I was a college student and I was working for a software company maybe a better way to do this was to raise money like many of my friends did 
Um, I just didn't, at the time, I didn't know anybody like this. I didn't know this was possible. Now I know it is possible. Like you can totally do this. Like with the right idea, if, especially if you show the product and some traction, you go, you showcase it. You know, you need to be able to go and present it. But I've seen people do this and you raise money. But then those people that invest in you, they have the connections usually. And they can help you with all these things. It just I never went that route. I decided I'm just going to do it alone, essentially. So, and that could be, you know, and maybe that's why I have these problems right now. But yeah. then, yeah, then you have the independence and you keep both arms and both legs, which is good because they usually want to take one arm and one leg <laughs> when, they, when they help you. <laughs> Well, we've come up on time here. Alexi, thank you very much for taking us inside your business and showing us some of the, the concerns that you have and, and the opportunities out there, what's keeping you up at night. To the listener who you know, is along for this journey and, and you see an opportunity that you think could help improve Award Wallet, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at update at runwithit.fm for ideas and things that you may change to business model. We'll take that and we'll pass that along to Alexi. Alexi, yeah, thank you very much for the time here. People can obviously go to awardwallet.com to find out more about you. What's one thing that you'd like to share with our listeners? Back when I started, you, the alternative to creating businesses was to watch TV after work. Because most people that are starting, I assume they have full-time jobs as I did you come from work and you know you just relax and you watch tv I think right now it's not maybe it's still the case I never like so I I decided from the beginning I'm not going to have cable so I just excluded that as even as a possibility in my in my apartment now I think it's social media is just a time suck so if you want to do something I think and I'm guilty of it I've spent too much time on social media but if I were in a situation when I'm starting from scratch, I probably would delete all my social media accounts and, and just don't waste time on it. They've got our brains. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, Alexi. So people can go to find out more about you at awardwallet.com or more about your company. Award Wallet, either download the app through iOS or, or the Android uh, uh, Play Store uh, or go to, to our website. Great. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. We enjoyed the conversation and we'll talk to you later on. Now it's time for you to run with it. Follow through on the action steps discussed and email a summary of what you did to update at runwithit.fm. Every listener who emails us will gain exclusive access to a private Facebook group of action takers. And one listener will earn a free mentoring session with today's guest and potentially a business partnership. Help us build the Run With It community of generous entrepreneurs. Please like, subscribe, and review us online. And remember, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. 